and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Good morning, friends. Welcome and thank you for joining us for worship on Moments of Inspiration. I am Jessica Mahadeo, a student minister of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago, currently attached to the Penal Pastoral Region. It is certainly a delight to praise and to worship and to meditate with you just as we are in this very moment. Today marks the beginning of a new series, Revelations from the Seven Churches. The seven churches that we will be focusing on are those found in the book of Revelation. Leading us in this morning's meditation is Reverend Adrian Sionarine, our principal at the St. Andrews Theological College, and he gives us an introduction to the book of Revelation, focusing on John's visions of Jesus Christ. As we draw near to the Almighty God this morning, I invite you to bow in prayer. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, it is a blessing to be in your presence this morning. We willingly render our hearts to you as we prepare to focus on your greatness, lifting our voices in praise and opening our hearts to your revelations. We look back on our lives over this past week and we see where you have taken us out of our trials, when you lit our pathways on gloomy days, when you remain faithful to us and to your promises, even when we were unfaithful. Forgive us, O Lord, for the times when we failed you, but help us to draw nearer to you each day and to live according to the great love that we have received from you. Hear this, our prayer, as we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a blessing to have with us Miss Liana Dudnath of the Laramian Pastoral Region leading us in song. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you you alone are my heart's desire and i long to worship you you alone are my strength my shield to you more than anything. 
thing You alone are my strength, my shield To you alone may my spirit yield You alone are my heart's desire And I long to worship you This morning's scripture is taken from the book of Revelation, reading from chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, followed by verses 9 to 17. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which says, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for God's word. Amen. Of divine all loves excelling joy of heaven to earth come down fix in us thy humble dwelling all thy faithful mercies ground jesus thou art all compassion Speed. 
before thee lost in wonder love and praise welcome to a journey that we will be taking a journey looking at the seven churches which receive letters in the book of revelation letters written to the angels of those churches welcome to a journey that makes us look at ourselves and our own journey our own experiences welcome to moments of inspiration let's bow in prayer almighty and eternal god you are the god of today you are the god of tomorrow you are the god of yesterday you are the god of past generations you are the one who gives us and guarantees for us your spirit your power your grace and your goodness bless us o lord as you lead us by your grace to your glory bless us o lord as you lead us to new dimensions of wisdom and understanding in your name we pray o living lord of light and life and love jesus christ amen the book of revelation whose name comes from the greek word for unveiling or revealing can excite in us and awaken in us all kinds of emotions and reactions as we search for a range of interpretations we may wonder does this book of revelation speak to us about things that happened only in the past does this book of revelation speak to us about things that will happen only in the future does this book of revelation chart for us a course of events that begin in ancient history and take us to the end of all time whatever the lens through which we view the book of revelation this is true that the book of revelation speaks to us in all times and places and we find ourselves in all kinds of moments as we look at our moments described and depicted in every moment of the book of revelation we encounter seven churches ephesus smyrna pergamum Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Seven churches. I visited them some time ago and I realized that these seven churches they chart a circle. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea and in thinking of my own journey to them and through them I wondered are these seven churches meant to show us the completeness of life the completeness of God's message to all churches to all of us in our ages and stages and sometimes in our rages so that whatever we may be feeling whatever we may be experiencing whatever we may be going through there is a message for us every church can be each one of us perhaps according to our mood according to our own experiences and understanding according to our own vision and perception perhaps these seven churches can describe a globe a world 
a universe of churches where each church can represent our own particular church in its own journey, in its own time. And sometimes we may be Ephesus. Sometimes we may be Smyrna. Sometimes we may be Pergamon. Sometimes we may be Thyatira. Sometimes we may be Sardis. Sometimes we may be Philadelphia. Sometimes we may be Laodicea. And then back again as the circle continues. As our world continues. As our journey continues. We chart the course. We make the circle. We recognize ourselves. And we think of how God, through divine grace and almighty providence, shows us in love that there is always a letter for us. There's always a message for us. Through the mystery and the majesty of God, there is something that God is saying to us. God may be speaking to us about love, about commitment, about devotion. God may be awakening on, in us a new understanding that although we thought we were so accomplished and we had achieved so much, we need to recognize and to realize that we have to wake up to who we really are. We have to shake off everything that is hindering us. And we need to take up a new challenge with new vision and mission. The seven churches speak to every single one of us in our moods and in our moments, in our feelings and in our faith. We recognize the world that these seven churches depict and describe that's our world. The message comes through the centuries to meet us where we are here and now. So that in the midst of technology and turmoil and tribulation and tragedy, we recognize that God is still speaking to us. And we start with who we are and where we are. So it is a message for us today. And then we recognize where we have come from and we see that the Lord of today is the Lord of yesterday. And then we think about the glorious unknown tomorrow and we recognize that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that revelation shows us what is, what has been, and what will yet be unfolded according to the plan and the purpose of Almighty God. And so we see that each one of us can be a world. Each one of our churches can be a universe. And whatever step we are taking along the journey, God has something to say to us. God has a lot to say to us. And sometimes, even though we may feel as though we are in gloom, God may be speaking to us and saying, you are faithful, be faithful, and I will give you the crown of life. Sometimes we may feel as though we are in the heights of glory and we have achieved so much. And God may be speaking to us to say, be careful. Be careful because your pride is your downfall. Be careful because I know you. I know you and I love you. Repent. Turn around. And we realize that the circle of those seven churches, the circle in which they were physically located so many years ago, is the circle in which we are spiritually located. Today, wherever we are, you and I, 
receive the message from God. And we realize that God has a message for us. Whatever you are going through, God is speaking to you today to show you, to show me, to show all of us that these seven churches speak to us about our lives, about our love, and about our living journey with God. These letters are the living legacy of Christ speaking to us now. So let us take up the letters over the coming weeks and may they cause us to wake up, to shake up, and to take up a new vision and mission by the light of the living Lord. Thanks be to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's bow in prayer. Living and eternal God of love, you love us with an everlasting love and you speak to our own personal universe to show us that over the centuries, people may still be the same. We still need to hear your living word. We still need to recognize ourselves in the letters that you send to us when we are in our own Ephesus, in our own Smyrna, in our own Pergamum, in our own Thyatira, in our own Sardis, in our own Philadelphia, in our own Laodicea. We receive those letters and we recognize that you speak to our soul, you write to our mind, you awaken our conduct, you reform our character. Bless us, O Lord. Heal us, hear us, and help us. Be with us in our sickness and sorrow and suffering and lead us always by your grace to your glory. In your name we pray, for you alone are the living one, King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround. Let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my
spirit leads me on by the power of your love. At this time, we want to express deep gratitude to Reverend Adrian for a wonderful introduction and an insightful meditation as we delve into the book of Revelation. We extend a heartfelt thanks to Ms. Liana Dudnath for enhancing our time of praise this morning. May the favor of the Lord ever be upon you. We also say a special thank you to our friends at Mizpah Signature Events for providing our breathtaking set design here on Moments of Inspiration. And finally, to you, our dear viewers, we express gratitude for worshiping with us. Remember, if you would like to view this episode again or share with friends, feel free to visit our YouTube channel, Presbyterian Church, Trinidad and Tobago, where you can find this and all our previous episodes, meditations, and even the clips of the songs we sing. We also invite you to join our online community to connect with us and other faithful viewers of Moments of Inspiration. On Facebook, you can find the page Moments of Inspiration and on Instagram using the handle Presbyterian Church of TT. If you want to find out more about us, you can contact us via our website at www.pctt.org.tt. Join us next week as we continue to dig deeper into the visions of John in the book of Revelation. I now leave you with today's moment of inspiration. Lead us as we listen to your love letters in Revelation, living God. <laughs>